Good afternoon and welcome to All Hallows Episcopal Church on this Wednesday, September 27th for a service of Noonday Prayer. I am thrilled that our friend Karen Wilson is back from her travels to help lead today. Good afternoon, Karen. Good afternoon. Happy to be here. It's wonderful to have you. Uh, we are in the Book of Common Prayer on page 103. Our psalm today is portions of Psalm 37, uh, specifically verses 27 to 33. If you don't have a copy, listen along and pray with us. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our psalm is Psalm 37, beginning with the 27th verse. Depart from evil and do good, so you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his faithful ones. The righteous shall be kept safe forever, but the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak justice. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their steps do not slip. The wicked watch for the righteous and seek to kill them. The Lord will not abandon them to their power or let them be condemned when they are brought to trial. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Today, Holy Women, Holy Men remembers Vincent de Paul. Uh, he was born in France in 1580 to a peasant family, and he took his theological studies at Toulouse and was ordained in 1600. When he was called to hear the confession of a dying man, Vincent was shocked by the spiritual naivete of the penitent. In response, Vincent preached sermons on confession, calling people to the necessity of repentance. So persuasive was his sermons that villagers stood in line to go to confession. Vincent had underestimated their spiritual hunger. In 1626, Vincent and three priests pledged to aggregate and associate to ourselves and to live together as a congregation, and to devote ourselves to the salvation of the people. Vincent devoted great energy to conducting retreats for clergy because of what he perceived as widespread deficiencies in theological education and priestly formation. He was a pioneer in the renewal of theological education and was instrumental in establishing seminaries. Charity was a predominant virtue of Vincent's, and uh, he extended it to all. He established charitable co-fraternities to serve the needs of the poor and sick, and he called upon women of means in Paris to collect funds for his missionary project, particularly hospitals, to serve the poor. He said that except for the grace of God, he would have been hard and repulsive, rough and cross. His temperament was irascible, but he became tender and affectionate, sensitive to the need of, needs of others, an extraordinary capacity to connect with all types of people and to move them to be empowered by the gospel of Jesus. Though honored as a, one of the great ones of the world, he remained deeply hu humble. At his funeral, the preacher declared that Vincent had just about transformed the face of the church, was the apostle of charity, and he died in 1660 at the age of 80. He is the patron saint of charitable causes, and I think that you have a reading for us, Karen. I do. Our reading today is from 1 Corinthians 1, verses 26 to 31. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. 
Not many were powerful, not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to abolish things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. In contrast, God is why you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take a few minutes in meditation and contemplate what we've just heard. Try to keep the stress of the week away and let your shoulders drop and breathe easily. This idea of there is a theme that, that exists throughout Paul's writings and the Gospels themselves, and it's this reversal of fortune idea. And we hear that front and center in this reading from 1 Corinthians, where it's not the powerful, it's not the wise by human standards, it's not the nobles, it is those that are um, the opposite, those that are weak, those that are foolish, those that are considered low in class. And it is this idea of these are the ones. These are the ones that God can work through. I mean, of course, God can work through the wise and the powerful and, um, and the noble as well as the lowly. But it is, it is another way of God entering into the world to lift up those that have been kept down. And that's what Vincent de Paul did in his life with the establishment of hospitals and um, with his charitable works, seeking to go out and lift up those that were um, discarded by humanity, by discarded by society. Um, and we hear that in this first Corinthians reading. And it occurs to me as I was listening to Karen read this, that so often um, there are people that are not humble like Vincent de Paul was and are full of themselves. And because they are so full of themselves, it's hard for God to enter in and work. However, when we are foolish, lack wisdom, when we are weak, lack strength, and when we are not noble, but lower um, on the rung, there's more room for God to enter in and, and to, to lift us up. And so today I invite us to contemplate our own reversal of fortune, how we have been lifted up by God, um, how we have been um, made wise and strong and worthy by the gift and the love of Jesus Christ. So I invite us into that place today. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your servant, Vincent DePaul. 
who gave himself to training clergy to work among the poor and provided many institutions to aid the sick, orphans, and prisoners. May we, like him, encounter Christ in the needy, the outcast, and the friendless, that we may come at length into your kingdom where you reign one God, holy and undivided Trinity, forever and ever. Amen. In this moment of prayer, we invite your prayers. Wherever you are, um, in whatever manner is you're able, aloud in silence or in comments, we begin by lifting up all those on the parish prayer list. For Martha, Larry, Amaya, Jennifer, Mike, Bill, Linda, Judy, Charlotte, Paul. For Bill, Ian, Donald, Karen, Helen, Gulzar, Nargis, Anselm, Brishna, Bob, and June. Ben, Phyllis, Jack, Bob and Robin, Lisa. For William, Alexandra, Frank, Lindsay, Mackenzie, Sean, the Levitt family, John. For Anne. For the Allen family, Michael, Sean and Anne, Judy, Patricia, and Donna. And we lift up, Karen, you'll have to remind me his name, the Archdeacon of Cornwall. Paul Breyer. Thank you. Those that are suffering with COVID around the world and all those trying to bring comfort and healing, we lift them up to God's care for the hungry and the homeless and those that are housed insufficiently or those that are on the edge of, of um, being destitute. We pray for the unemployed and the underemployed. We pray for those who struggle with their mental health. We pray for those who are trapped in addiction. We pray for the angry and the anxious and the crowded and the isolated. We pray for caregivers of all kinds. We pray for the world, for an ending of violence everywhere, especially the war in Ukraine. We pray for an easing of tensions between nations that peace may be sought. We pray for an end of gun violence in our streets, an end of racism in our world. We pray for Abington and Jenkintown, Cheltenham, Wincote, and Glenside, our leaders and our first responders. We pray, Lord, for the kids who are back in school and especially the young people of All Hallows, that you would keep them safe, help them to learn more about your world, more about themselves. We pray for the church, the church in all of its manifestations, that Wherever we go and whatever we do, we are a light, <clears throat> the light of love in this world. Especially do we pray for All Hallows Parish and our ministry and our com communities. We pray for the vestry and the meeting tonight and how we are stewards of this place at this time. We pray for the ministry of the acolytes. We remember all who have died, that they may have a place in God's eternal kingdom, especially for the saints of all hallows. And we give thanks. We give thanks for this day, for at least a little bit of sunshine after gray days. We give thanks for birthdays and anniversaries and the rhythm of life and 
the opportunities to travel and to see people we love for the blessings that we notice, the blessings that we don't. We give thanks for my friend Karen and all of her ministries at All Hallows and for all the people of All Hallows and how they serve so faithfully in so many different ways. We thank you for the upcoming concert um, in conjunction with Curtis Institute of Music on Saturday night. Pray that you would bless that as we um, give gifts to our community members, gifts of music and creativity. Mm. All these prayers we lift up to you, O God, in the sure and certain hope that you hear and will act as is best for us. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being here, <clears throat> excuse me, and joining us today for Noonday Prayer. It is a privilege to pray with you. Um, we will be back again on Thursday. And as Karen said during the prayers, Saturday night is the first of our Curtis concerts. That is at seven o'clock. It is free. We do ask that you make reservations. Check out our website or our Curtis at All Hallows org website um, to order tickets. It can be found on Ticketly. Um, please come and and support this wonderful in, this wonderful endeavor and encounter God through music. We will be uh, churches at Sunday on Sunday at ten o'clock, and you are welcome because all are welcome always. Uh, for your planning, October 8th, Blessing of the Animals in honor of St. Francis Day. So after church at 1230. So bring your pets. We hope that you will take uh, in whatever All Hallows has to offer. And if there's something that you need, please reach out, out to us. Thank you, Karen, for your leadership. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Be at peace and pray for peace. <laughs>